Now let's talk about addresses in branches and jumps. So this is how do we use the immediate fields that we just talked about when we're looking at branch not equal, branch equal, and jump instructions. So in MIPS, branch instructions come in two flavors. Branch not equal and branch equal come in the I format. And remember, that means there's a 16-bit immediate. And jump comes in the J format, which gives it a 26-bit immediate. But our addresses are 32 bits, because we have a 32-bit machine, so we need 32 bits to point to the next instruction in memory. And the question is, how do we combine the 16-bit immediate, or the 26-bit immediate, to get the new instruction address, which is a 32-bit value? So what we do is we treat branch not equal and branch equal as relative offsets. So by being a relative offset, that means we're going to take this 16-bit immediate and we're going to add it to the current program counter. So we're going to add it to the current address of the instruction. Now this is really nice because it means that this can be a positive or negative number so we can both jump forwards and backwards with branch equal and branch not equal. The jump instruction, we're just going to treat the constant as an absolute value. So we're just going to replace a whole bunch of the values in the current program counter with those bits. Now let's take a look at this. So here's our current 32-bit program counter. So this is the 32-bit value. It is the address of the current instruction in memory. And let's see what a branch not equal or branch equal I format instruction does. So we want to calculate our next 32-bit program counter value. And we've got this 16-bit immediate. Now I told you before we're going to add in this immediate. But we're not just going to add it in, we're also going to sign extend it. Because remember, we're adding it to a 32-bit value, so we need to sign extend our 16-bit value. We're also going to shift it over by two bits, put just 0, 0 in here. And the reason for that is because we know that instructions are word aligned. That is, they're always going to be multiples of 4 in the address, so we're always going to have 0, 0 here. So there's no point to encode the 0, 0s in our immediate, since we know every immediate for a branch is going to have 0, 0, so we shift it over. And this 0, 0 is also going to be in the final program counter value because all instructions are word aligned. Now in addition to doing this, extending it, shifting it, and adding it, we're also going to add in 4. And this is because we always add 4 to go on to the next instruction. This is just the way the processor is hard-coded to always add 4. So now to calculate the branch instruction, we take the current PC, we add 4 to it, then we add the sign extended, shifted 16-bit immediate, and that gives us our next PC. Now this is a little bit different for the jump instruction. As we said, this jump instruction is an absolute value, so we're just going to replace the bits. So here we take our current 32-bit program counter. We want to generate our next 32-bit PC. Take the 26-bit immediate we have in the middle, and we just replace it. So whatever was in the current 32-bit PC just gets replaced with this. And the rest we move down, and of course this last part's always going to be zero because it's an instruction. So for the branch not equal and branch equal instructions, we're going to add in the immediate. This gives us an offset so we can jump forwards or backwards. And for the jump instruction, we're just going to replace the bits with the 26-bit immediate. So a question, why do we have these zero zeros at the end of the immediate when we jump and branch? Well, the answer is all of the above. Instructions are word aligned, so we know we'll never have anything other than zero zero here at the end. We always jump by full instructions. So there'd be no point in having an immediate value here which let us jump, say, by three, bit, three bytes, so we'd end up in the middle of an instruction. And to convert a 16-bit immediate into a number of instructions, we can just multiply it by four, because it's four bytes per instruction. So having these zero zeros here both makes sense and allows us to jump further, because now we jump in terms of instructions, not in terms of bytes. So let's take a look at an example of using jump addresses. Here's some code we had before, and we're going to look at the branch and the jump that we have in this code. So here's the branch. We have branch equal R5, R1, and we've got a 3 in here. But the comment over here says we want to go down to line 24. So how does this 3 get us down to instruction number 24? Well, let's take a look. So the original program counter we start at here is 8, because this instruction is at memory address 8. We want to get down to 24. It's the last one down here. So let's see what we end up doing. So the first thing we do is we add 4, because we always add 4. Now we're going to take this 3 into account. So how do we use this 3 when we add it in there? Well, we shift it over by two zeros, two bits, we put in our 3, and then we sign extend it. So sign extending 3 is going to put a 0 over here. 
But notice what happens here. When we sign it, when we shift over this three by two zeros here, that's the same thing as multiplying it by four. So what we really get here is we get eight plus four plus 12, which does indeed bring us down to address 24. And here you can see we've written this out here. It's eight, this was the original program counter where the instruction was, plus the four that we always add in, plus this three, but shifted over by two bits. Now let's take a look at the other instruction. This is this jump two. But jump two wants to go to address eight. How does that work? So we start out here at instruction address 20, because our jump is at instruction address 20. And some of these bits are just going to be brought right down, but they're zeros, because they're all zeros up here. And we're going to have zeros over here on the right side, because we always start out with zeros. So we're just going to take this constant and put it down in the middle. So the constant we had from our jump instruction is 2. We're going to put 2 in the middle. We're going to shift it over by 2 bits. And 2 shifted over by 2 bits is 8. So now we've taken the bits that have this 20 and we just replace them with an 8. So this is going to cause us to jump up to instruction at address 8, just as we expected. Now, this looks like a real hassle. And the reality of it is, when you write this code, you just use labels. You can call this here done loop, and you can call this repeat loop, and let the compiler or the assembler figure out exactly what numbers to put in there for you. But it's important for you to understand how to do this so you understand how MIPS is using all of the bits in the instruction fields. So now let's take a look at what kind of branches we have in a program and why MIPS made these trade-offs. So here are two different types of programs. Integer, these are regular programs such as a web browser, and floating point, these are image processing or scientific programs. And what you see here is the percentage of branches based on how many displacement bits they need. So what you see here is a lot of branches need one to five bits of displacement. Very, very few branches need more than 11 bits of displacement. So MIPS decision to provide 16 bits of displacement was a pretty good one. So 16 bits is enough for almost everything. Not everything, but almost everything. Now if we look at the type of branches. So what you see here is that for floating point branches, less than and greater than or equal to are very common branch types, but for integer code, the code that most people run, equals and not equals are by far the most common branches. So what MIPS does is it optimizes for this case. That's why we have branch equals and branch not equal instructions. It's for floating point programs where you need to use other comparison operations. So here's a question. How far can you jump with the immediate field in the branch equal, branch not equal instruction? You've seen how it's interpreted, so how far does it get you? Well, it's going to get you minus 2 to the 15th to plus 2 to the 15th minus 1 instructions. So it's going to get you sort of 16 bits of instructions back and forth, not bytes, instructions. And the reason this is in terms of instructions, not bytes, is because we take this immediate value and we shift it over by 2 bits. So instead of having this count directly as bytes, it counts as instructions. So you should note that we're adding in plus 4 here, so it's not exactly that because this limits the range a little bit, but it's a small difference in the overall range. So question, what address is the following instruction going to jump to when the branch is taken? So the instruction is at address 12. So the program counter or address of this instruction is 12. Where are we going to end up when we take the branch? So we're going to end up at address 80. And we can see this because we've got a 16 in here. We know we're going to multiply that by 4. We always add 4, and here's our base PC, so we add them all up and we get 80. Now let's take a look at how you calculate that. So here's our current PC. We started out at address 12 for this instruction. We know we're always going to add in 4. And now we're going to take the constant we have here, this 16. We're going to shift it over 2, which is the same thing as multiplying it by 4. Then we're going to sign extend it. And then we're going to add all this together. So what we get is we get 12 plus 4 plus 16 times 4, which gets us to address 80.